All right, we're going to do the areas of similar figures. So today you will find the areas of similar figures by using scale factors. Um, I'll worry about the second one maybe later. Determine how you, uh, you, you, today you will determine how the changes in dimensions affect the area of figures. I am more concerned with this one right here, okay? So this is the one we're going to focus on. All right, so what are we going to do here? Okay, so keep in mind that we did something, um, I'll do it like this before where we said, okay, look, if some, these two figures are similar, then they would have the same scale factor. So like 10 and 5, 18 and 9, comparing the same similar sides, that would be 18, That they both have a scale factor of 2. And the perimeters, which would be like, say, 56 and 28, would also have a scale factor of 2. So the question then is, what about the areas? Well, if you look at the areas, the area of the bigger one is 180, and the area of the smaller one is 45. And I put the bigger one over the smaller one, I get 4. So the area, notice, is 2 squared. So the area of a similar figure doesn't match the same scale factor, but is scale factor squared. So, And that's what that says. Theorem 11.1 .1 says the area of similar polygons that if two figures are similar, then their areas are, <clears throat> say, the scale factor squared. All right. Um, so, for example, now how how are we going to do this? Okay, so we're going to say here triangle JKL is similar to PQR, and I'm going to tell you that JKL is 30, the area. Okay, so how do you find the area of PQR? Well, in this case, uh, what I would do is this. First off, uh, which one are they giving me? They're giving me this one, the 30. Okay, so this one says like here area is equal to 30. Now, what I would do there from that is, is okay, so since this is the one they're giving me, that one, those numbers are going to go on the bottom, and the other one is going to go on top, the one I'm looking for. So I, I kind of ignore this and, and go with this. The one that we're looking for is going to go on top, and the one that we have like in all the measurements, is going to go on the bottom. I'm hoping that makes more sense. Okay, so 15 over 12. That, I'm not notice, I'm just doing the sides. Okay, so that gives me that we simplify to 5 fourths. Now, if I square that, that means the areas are in a scale factor of 25 over 16 to each other. And all I got to do is take this scale factor right here for the areas, I'll call this the area scale factor, and multiply it to the area of the one that I was given, and I would get 46.875 or 46.9, okay? And that should work pretty much every time. So look, here's another one. So on this one, I'm saying that I have a scale factor. Uh, the one I'm looking for is five. I'm given the eight. So, like I said, the one that you're looking for goes on top. The one that you're given goes on the bottom. Uh, so if I take the 25, or square that, I get 25 over 64. And if I were to multiply that to the 32, I should get my answer there. Um, I mean, there's so many different ways you can look at this on how you might want to remember it. Um, but, we'll, we'll, you know, if you're a little confused, we, we can discuss that and see if we can find a, a good answer. Okay? Um, what else? So, that's if I wanted to find the areas. Now, what happens if I want to go in reverse? They give me the areas, and I want to find the sides. All right, so we want to see how we can do this. Now, let's go over some things here. We've got the area is uh, 54 for the smaller one, F, G, H, J. The larger one is 150 for A, B, C, D. And can you, and we're going to say that these, of course, are similar. So can you find out what it is? Now, again, same idea. I'm putting here area, area, because, well, why not? But notice, again, when you're dealing with areas, the scale factor is technically squared. So we can say that's like k squared. So k squared here, the, and the reason why we're saying k, because the scale factor of the sides is supposed to be squared to get to the areas. So if this is the areas, we need to go backwards and do the square root. So, again, we're looking for the smaller, or in this case, we're looking for the smaller one, so we're going to put 54, and we, the one they're giving us is the larger one, 150, and we're going to take the square root of that, and we would get three-fifths. 
you could literally type this in just like that into the calculator and you will get three fifths. Okay, so if you multiply that scale factor, notice how that number is smaller than one and we wanted to go to a smaller answer. So that might also help you with some idea of where to place the numbers. Um, but that three fifths times the 10 will give us six and so that answer for X is six. So it would be six meters. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop there because the one with dimensions I feel like needs more explanations, but we'll go ahead and stop there. And that should be it for today. If you have any questions, make sure you ask, but I'm always here to help. Thank you so much for your time, kiddos. Y'all take care.